Hello Synapse community, my name is Ryan Majidimer and I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Today is the October edition of the Synapse MVP video series. Each month I'm joined by an MVP and we talk about something that they're interested in. Today's topic is the DP500 certification. For those of you who don't know, though I'm sure a lot of you do know, the DP500 certification is the Azure Enterprise Data Analyst certification. Synapse is an integral part of this certification, as well as Power BI and Microsoft Purview. So therefore, I'm very excited to say I have not one, but two MVPs with me today, Andy Cutler and Nicola Illich, both of which have already passed the exam and are excited to tell you about some tips that they have for mastering the skills you need to pass the test. Hi, Andy. Hi, Nicola. Welcome. Very excited to have both of you here today. If you could just introduce yourselves real quick. Hey Ryan, thanks for having us. I'm Nikol Ilic, a data platform MVP from Austria, and my primary area of expertise is Power BI. Hey Ryan, it's great to be on the channel. I'm also a data platform MVP based in the UK, and I work predominantly with Synapse Analytics and SQL Server. Awesome. Well, let's get into the DP500 exam. So what are some tips that you guys have, and can you tell us about the topics that are covered? Thanks, Ryan. If you don't mind, I'll focus on Power BI. Uh, Power BI topics represent a huge portion of the DP500 exam. As someone who successfully completed both PL300 and DP500, I would say that Power BI topics covered in the DP500 require, as the exam title suggests, uh, more enterprise-grade experience. So it's not just about understanding uh, the basic concepts such as data modeling, direct query, or role-level security, but more about how things scale uh, with the growing amounts of data and the uh, huge number of concurrent users. Uh, the emphasis is also on uh, leveraging various external tools uh, like Tabular Editor, DAX Studio, or Vertipack Analyzer to fine tune your Power BI uh, solutions and identify potential bottlenecks. Of course, it's not only performance uh, tuning related, as these external tools may be used to manipulate the tabular model behind your Power BI solution, which means that you can leverage the features uh, such as calculation groups uh, or object level security, which are not available natively from Power BI desktop. Uh, advanced data visualization topics represent another huge part of this exam, uh, especially using Python visualizations uh, and Python programming language to extend beyond built-in visualization offerings. Uh, I've also found designing Power BI reports for accessibility topic uh, quite interesting, as it sheds a whole different light uh, on the traditional approach for uh, designing reports. Things like color palette, color contrast, uh, choosing a report theme, stuff you know that we usually take for granted. Uh, another appealing topic for me was managing analytics development life cycle something that is extremely important in enterprise environments. Things like deployment pipelines, uh, using Power BI REST APIs, and so on. Uh, last but not least, a significant portion of the exam is understanding how Power BI fits into the big picture within enterprise organizations. So we are talking about integration with other Microsoft data platform offerings, such as uh, Azure Synapse Analytics or Microsoft Purview. Uh, from that point of view, uh, there are certain Power BI administration skills that come in handy. For example, configuring uh, tenant settings, managing on-premises gateways, or integrating the existing Power BI workspace with uh, Azure Data Lake storage and Synapse. Thanks, Nicola. There's some really interesting topics for Power BI. Andy, can you talk us through some of the other data platform services that are included in the exam? I certainly can. Now, DP500 tests your understanding of which SQL pools service to use in which querying scenario. So we've got two SQL pools available, dedicated and serverless. Now, dedicated is for ingesting large amounts of data into its own storage system, whereas serverless doesn't actually hold any data itself, but allows us to connect to external data in Azure storage, Data Lake Gen 2, the Dataverse, and Cosmos DB. And having an understanding of the partition pruning functions, like the file path SQL function, is useful. 
And of course, the file types that serverless can process, including delimited files and more analytical file types, such as Parquet and the Delta format. So in this demo, I'm creating a view in a serverless SQL pools database over Parquet data stored in Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Now I'm creating three columns using the file path function, which exposes the folders within the data lake itself. If I create that view, we'll be able to use those file path columns to actually select the data from a specific folder. So if I run this query here using that file path function, we get our results back. Also, here's a handy tip. Serverless can process complex data types such as JSON files and nested data types within Parquet files. So an understanding of JSON functions such as JSON value and open JSON is important. We also have Microsoft Purview, a data governance service available in Azure, which connects to services such as Power BI and imports metadata about dashboards, reports, data sets and data flows, including the data sources. So you must understand the basic functionality of the data map, which connects to and initiates a scan of a Power BI tenant and imports its metadata, whilst the data catalog allows you to browse assets and create and browse a business glossary. In this demo, we're in Purview Studio. If I click on data map, I can view the data sources that I have registered. In this case, I've registered a Power BI tenant and initiated a scan of that tenant. I can see that the scan has discovered 391 assets. Then I can use the data catalog. In this example, I'm going to click on the glossary and see all of my available business terms that have been logged in the glossary. I can click on sales and see all of those assets that have been tagged with the data assets from Power BI. If I click on view assets, I can see each item that's been tagged. I can then filter on the type of asset, in this case, dashboards, and I'll see all dashboards tagged with that particular glossary term. And finally, if we click into the dashboard itself and click on lineage, we'll be able to see all the dependencies for that dashboard, including reports and data sets. There's even machine learning in DP500 too, but don't worry about needing to understand data science. This is more about understanding the predict SQL function within Dedicated and understanding the parameters it needs and also the fact that it only has the Onyx model. And then finally, there are the visualization features available within Synapse Studio. So we have the ability to visualize the results of a SQL query in a standard table, but also one of six basic chart types. And also visualizing data within Spark notebooks using the matplotlib and Seaborn libraries. So definitely make sure you check out the analyzed data with Apache Spark page in the Synapse documentation. That's great. Thanks, Andy. What are the best places where you can pick up the skills necessary to pass the DP500 exam? My go-to resources for preparing the DP500 exam are obviously an official Microsoft Learn DP500 learning path. I've also written a series of blog posts that cover most of the Power BI related topics and provide another perspective on the skills measured in this exam. Uh, then, if you want to master Synapse Analytics related skills, I strongly recommend uh, my friends Andy Cutler YouTube channel and blog. Of course, the official uh, Azure Synapse Analytics uh, YouTube channel is an awesome place to broaden your uh, Synapse knowledge. I can also recommend Learning Data Insights website from our fellow MVP Rishi Sapra, where you can find practice questions for the exam. Thanks, Andy and Nicola. Sure, these tips will be very helpful for everybody that's aspiring to they themselves have the Azure Enterprise Data Analyst certification. It was a pleasure. Thanks again for hosting us and good luck everyone with the exam. Thanks, Ryan. And I really, really do hope it helps people who are on their journey studying for DP500.
Well, that wraps up our video for today. Tell us in the comments, have you already passed the DP500 exam and have tips of your own? Are you interested in passing the DP500 exam? I'd love to hear about it. Again, my name is Ryan Pajitimer. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Synapse on Twitter, Azure underscore Synapse. And if you like Twitter or other social media platforms, we have just the program for you, the Azure Synapse Influencer Program. There's titles, three of them, uh, challenger, champion, contender, the big three C's, if you will. At any rate, it's very easy to sign up. There's a link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.